Keith, a day to go. We've seen it with the training sessions so far this week. There's been an intensity with the lads. They've been on it from the moment you got them back together. Yeah, uh, bright, breezy, enthusiastic. Um, there's an edge to training. There's an intensity about the workload that, uh, that the players are doing. Um, and again, there's a structure. But within that structure, there's still an element of the players being able to express themselves, which is, uh, which is how we work. With the 46 game job done, has that taken a little bit of, I hate using that word pressure, but it's a fact, does it take any of that away? No, um, I think the, the pressure's been building as the season has come to an end. The, obviously with the, the situation being in the playoffs, out of the playoffs, in the playoffs, out of the playoffs, uh, and then ultimately the, going down to the last game of the season, there's been a, uh, a continuation of that pressure. And I've got to say the players have dealt with it very well, and, and even probably more so. Once it was identified exactly what was needed, the players knew what was required individually, collectively, and the targets were set again individually and collectively of what was needed on the game throughout the 94, 95 minutes. Um, and I've got to say, the, the players did what was needed to do. Part of that intensity is the fact you've got 28, 20 odd bodies in there who all want to be involved. That's great competition to have. Yeah, I think it shows the the strength of the uh, of the recruitment process now, where everybody that's in that changing room now uh, is vying for uh, a place in the eighteen and ultimately uh, a place in the starting eleven, and they're all capable of playing. And you know, square pegs, square players sounds bad. That's where <laughs> square pegs and square holes. Um, should I say so? Yeah, you know, depending on formations, uh, changes within formations in games, I'm, I'm able to play, play and put players in areas that I think can hurt the opposition. Okay. Uh, Paul Tisdale speaking yesterday about the fact that these te teams know each other really well, but they seem to intimate that doesn't really make any difference. It comes down to playing the game. Yeah, definitely. Um, knowledge uh, of the opposition to a degree can help you, as in to, and probably more so you'd have a, you'd have a look at uh, consistent performers w within their team of, of how they play. Um, it's something, something that we've looked at. They've got a style of play um, uh, that we're very respectful of, and, and likewise, they've got strengths and they've got weaknesses, uh, the same as any League Two team, any League Two football club. Um, so again, we take one game at, uh, at a time. Exactly the same as what probably uh, Paul will be doing with his squad and his team as well. Uh, deal with deal with the game and not the occasion. Does the Wembley word get mentioned at all? Is it banned? Do you not even refer to it? No, I think everybody knows what, uh, what's at stake uh, and what the and what the prize is ultimately. Um, if we're successful over these two games, then as a football club, we get an opportunity to go into a one-off game at Wembley to to get promoted. So that's that is the aim of getting into the playoffs. The first objective now is to focus and get uh, get our minds around and get and get our get our game plan into place uh, for Sunday. And Exeter, we know what we do know all about them. We know what they're going to bring tomorrow night. It'll be a case of let's just keep doing what we've been doing. Yeah, um, the, the, the focus is right. We've uh, we've got a good understanding of of what's required uh, from from ourselves. We've got uh, key individuals that are back playing, enjoying themselves, and they will like the big occasion. They will like a a, a packed, buoyant Brunton Park as well. And the, the the players, everything is set up and everything will be right. We've got a fantastic playing surface. I think that both teams will have, will appreciate. You've got both both teams that want to play the game um, in in a, in a way that brings success success for each team. 8,600 as we left the ticket office, the, the phones are still ringing, there's still queues, the girls are still working away serving the tickets, that's exactly what you asked for. Yeah, definitely. Um, and again, I've got to say a thank you to the people um, the, for, for the ticket office staff who have done a fantastic job. Um, and again, just when they probably think it's going to be a downtime and you're just going to be dealing with uh, the trickle of season tickets, next thing you you, know, you want to try and get a gate of 10,000 people. And th that workload uh, has been handled and challenged very well by the, by the girls in the ticket office. They, uh, they want to help, they can't wait to help, they want to sell tickets, uh, they want people to come and support the football club, they want people to enjoy the experience of coming to Brunton Park. Great line, I used it as one of my headlines from you earlier in the week where you said this is Brunton Park, this is our home, you want it to be bouncing tomorrow night. Yeah, I've got, I've got to say the times that I've been here with, that we've had um, big occasions here when, when we uh, entertained Everton, uh, I think as a football club, I think again I think we made a lot of friends with how we were, how we were able to cope with a Premier League club coming here uh, and looking after them as, uh, as a professional unit, as a professional outfit, I thought we did very well. Um, even the result on the pitch wasn't what uh, wasn't what we wanted, um, but 
take into account the, the quality of Everton Football Club. I thought we, we still gave a very competitive performance. And again, the other times when we've had big games here in, in, in excess of 7,000, when we played Hartlepool, uh, every every emotion was going through you. Uh, scoring goals, looking free-flowing, getting pegged back, getting a man sent off, uh, and then coming up with a winner uh, against a, a full house or a, a packed house. Uh, great emotions. And again, it shows... There's players at this football club that are enjoying the environment that we're creating, and I think there's just supporters that are enjoying. There's a there's a workforce inside Brunton Park that are enjoying the the environment that again that they are part of. Nothing won or lost tomorrow night. Is that a message that you remind the players of? Again, it's one game, um, one game that can lead to another game. But but our focus again will be on the, on the game itself, and not the occasion. Um, so ultimately, in every game that we go out, in, <clears throat> we go out to try and win the game of football. Uh, that won't change. Um, will we go get on the back foot? No, <clears throat> I don't like playing back foot football. Uh, I want to get on the front foot. I want to go and play. I want to entertain, uh, and I want to cause them problems. What do you want to see from the training session today? Because it is starting to get to that that really important period. The last 48 hours or so. Yeah, th th today is just purely about, uh, again, reinforcing my message, the clarity of what I want individually and collectively from the players. The role and responsibility is every single player is what I do on Fridays or, or, or day before games. Is So there's a clear message of what I want in possession, out of possession from every single player. I go through a number of scenarios that I think may come up. And again, players are well aware now. It's, it's a phrase that I use, uh, out of possession, be in position. Um, and then likewise, then in possession, we need to hurt the opposition. And just finally, Keith, as if we need to speak to you about big games, how are you individually, personally, in the lead-up to kick-off in these things? Um, I'm quite good. Um, probably what I do, I stay away from other people because other people make me nervous. So you find me, I'll be in here, I'll be watching, uh, I'll be watching TV. Um, it's, it's what I do. I speak to my family, my family coming up tomorrow. So uh, my daughter and my granddaughter uh, are being mascots. So they'll be really excited. So they'll be in here um, preparing and having the mascot, the mascot experience. Uh, and then ultimately, I get to an hour, hour and a half before the game, and then I just clear, I clear my head and get me focus. And then I'm, then I go out and do the warm up with the players to, again to make sure that in my mind they're right. And it's all about the focus. And that's what I try and do on match days. I make sure everybody's focus is on what they need to do as an individual within a team framework. Uh, and then I go and enjoy the game. Thanks for your time yet again.